the League of Legends community is one of the most toxic gaming communities that exists. The mix between relying on your teammates and also not having the game within your control makes for a very stressful environment that ultimately makes you feel like you need to blame other people for the games that you lose. I can't blame other people for getting frustrated and being upset because League of Legends also just so happens to have many trolls, inters, and people that also go AFK within the game. And ironically, this has only gotten worse as time has gone on. It's a snowball effect that keeps getting worse and worse and worse as time goes on. There are so many leading factors that have contributed to the state of the League of Legends community as of right now. But first, before we get into those reasons, we're going to get some words from our community leaders, such as Voidboy and Tyler1, to see what they think about the current state of the game. The state of the community and the player base has gotten progressively worse over time. And I know this for a fact. I obviously don't work at Riot. I don't have the statistics, the numbers to back it up. But I think you can ask almost anyone and you know you will get a resounding agreement that the player base has become more toxic, a lot more griefers, a lot more people just like straight up running it down, inting games, going AFK because you know someone annoyed them or whatever, even regardless of a reason. So sick of this company. The trash. It's the game. It sucks. Play this. So we can see here, obviously, Voidboy and Tyler One are two total opposite ends of the spectrum. Tyler One is very much ruled by emotion, where he just says what he feels and what he thinks in the moment. He doesn't really think about how people might perceive it, and that's why he's very popular. While Voidboy, on the other hand, takes a much more, you know, soft-spoken approach, where he just kind of talks about it and has a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with people. And, you know, frankly, I agree with both of them. I understand Tyler One's frustration. I've been in the same spot he's in right now as well. When people are running it down in your games, intentionally feeding, and also trolling you, you can feel that frustration. And on the other hand, Voidboy, you know, he obviously took a lot more of a soft-spoken approach to the whole subject, but of course I agree with him too. He's just kind of reiterating what was said in a more understandable and digestible format. So yeah, I'm gonna get into the re reasons now, guys, as to why this game has gone downhill so quickly and hopefully we can all come to an agreement on how to make this community better. Now to finally get into the reasons as to why the game has degraded to the point that it's at right now. And the first reason is League of Legends is a team game that pits you up with random players. And the issue with this is that if one of those players does not want to win, he can very easily jeopardize the rest of the team with little to no consequences. And you might be wondering, well, how could we ever fix this problem? I do think that there are some very good answers, but it does require a lot more involvement from Riot Games, which I do not think that right now they're willing to commit to. And there have been a lot of players within the community that have aired this and said, hey, Riot needs to take a more hands-on approach. If you don't know how Riot Games' punishment system currently works, well, essentially what they do is they have an automated bot system that looks through your performances if you have gotten a large number of reports, and they then will action you based off of that. But because League of Legends is a game with so much nuances and so many little factors that constantly contribute to the game, if you're doing something like soft trolling or just walking around and refusing to team fight and group up, there's no way this bot will ever understand that you had lost your team the game by refusing to communicate and play around your team and you can easily play this off as a player as well so this is something that is very 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 commonly abused when it comes to win trading and also of course when it comes to players just wanting to lose their team the game for no particular reason aside from them having some form of vendetta or maybe playing with a player that they do not enjoy playing with now, the next thing we're going to talk about here is the 40-40-20 rule. Now, if you aren't familiar with what this is, it essentially just means that 40% of the control is within your team's control of, like, you know, impacting the game. 40% is on the enemy teams, and around 20% is on you, just naturally dividing up everyone in the game. Uh, and and just seeing where the percentages lie. That's how it works out, right? Uh, if you get very fed, but one of your teammates feeds a lot, well, it's gonna even out, right? And in terms of the likelihood of something happening or not happening, it's just as likely for the enemy team to have a fed member as you are to have a fed member. Just as it is, it's just as likely for the enemy team to have a feeding member that you do have a feeding member in one of your many lanes or your jungle role. So 
With this being a very strong contributing factor, if you ever underperform uh, in any game, you have a very high likelihood of losing, which makes a lot of sense, but the thing is, is if you perform extremely well, the likelihood of winning doesn't go up by all that much. And this becomes very, very, very frustrating for many players, and I can understand why. The current meta of how the game operates does not very much allow players to 1v9 and hard carry like you might want to. Now, the third issue that I'm going to talk about is actually boosting. If you guys didn't know, boosting in League of Legends is actually a multi-million dollar industry. It is by far the largest boosting industry out of any other game. Ironically, the only game that is catching up to League of Legends in terms of the boosting revenues is Valorant, another game created by Riot Games. Now, the reason why boosting is so prevalent within League of Legends is a lot of players feel powerless when it comes to climbing, and they just want to receive some end of season rewards, and they need a certain rank to achieve that. But this can also be incredibly toxic towards the game because there's a lot of players that got to ranks that they never deserved to achieve because another player who was far superior to them went ahead and got them to that rank and now they are in a rank playing with you when they don't deserve to be there and they elevate your chance of losing and sometimes also elevate your chance of winning games that otherwise you wouldn't have won if you weren't against a boosted player. Personally, I am a player who has climbed a diamond and I've played against multiple boosted players and played with multiple boosted players on my team and this is one of the most infuriating experiences ever because you know there's a very high probability that if you went against this boosted player the next game that you play he's going to be on your team and you'll know that your chance of losing is going to be incredibly high and this is also another large reason as to why people dodge games so frequently because they don't want to be placed with a player like that who could potentially lose them a game for no good reason. Now the fourth problem on our list here is snowballing in League of Legends is incredibly prevalent guys. The current meta is very very snowbally meaning that if one team gets an advantage early on into the game it is very very difficult for you to come back as a player and as a team. Obviously this scales with the rank of the players that you're going against but personally when I'm playing at a higher rank like Diamond Plus and I make one misplay. I'm instantly already ready to give up on the game because I know that the players that I'm playing against now have a astronomical advantage off of one silly misstep that I made and that is now going to also cost us the game. Now as you can imagine this will breed a ton of toxicity because now I'm on edge at all times because I know if I make one little misstep or one of my teammates makes one little misstep that's completely outside of my control it will th cost us the entire game and both teams will be on edge knowing that this is the case and you just need to play around this because if you don't you're going to cost yourself the game and you're going to lose LP very very quickly. So we've gone over four different problems as to why the League of Legends community is so incredibly toxic but I'm going to talk about what I think is the biggest problem out of all of them combined and that is the streaming community within the game. There are very, very many toxic streamers that exist within League of Legends that perpetuate this form of behavior and promote it to their fans even. Like some streamers will tell their fans to go ahead and into games. Some streamers will tell their fans to go and purposely win trade and get paid to win trade against certain players. And I think that is just unbelievable, guys. You know, we have the community leaders, the inspirers, the people that we should be looking up to basically making the problem worse by refusing to not do what the rest of the community is doing and they are actually glorified in many ways making the problem a lot worse and honestly guys I don't really blame them I understand why they feel the game is so frustrating and why the game is so toxic at the end of the day we're all humans and you know I've been there you've been there we've all been there at one point in time while playing this game we've all been extremely extremely frustrated but we're going to need some big changes for this to, you know, swap around. We're going to need a game that's a lot more balanced, less snowball-y. We're going to need a team game that everyone enjoys. And League of Legends is just not there right now. We really need to make some huge strides to change this moving forward. So in short, League of Legends does have many existing problems that can only really be solved if the moderators of the game want to take a more hands-on approach. Bringing back the tribunal system would be a fantastic way to do that, but that would require a big investment, cash investment from Riot Games to do so. And honestly, I don't foresee it really changing anytime soon. I don't know if there's any other way that Riot Games can really make a big impactful change, 
when it comes to the community and how things are currently you know being talked about within the community but i really hope that something will come to light here and change because frankly i am personally losing my passion in the game altogether and I'm, i really want this game to be fixed because i remember when league of legends was a fantastic game that i personally very enjoyed playing but it's just not that right now i've personally quit ranked gameplay altogether because i could not avoid the trolls the inters and the people that go afk in my personal games and i would love to hear your guys' stories in the comment section please let me know your personal stories of toxic people you've gone against afkers inters all the likes i'd love to hear all about it guys but i'm gonna end today's video so peace out i'll see you all in the next one